Okay. Um, hi, everyone. Um, today is really exciting for us. We will be showcasing how we build the first MLOps pipeline for the Applied ML team. Um, this is really exciting for us at a very um, a great milestone where we've started uh, dog fooding with internal customers uh, with uh, using review recommender. We, um, we've had a lot of questions on how we've used GitLab CI in building machine learning models. And here is our full, um, full pipeline that goes from data ops to ML ops to connect to the front end. And we'll go a lot more details into it. So to begin with, um, I'll start first sharing my screen. Um, this is just a little bit of the basics of how Review Recommender, the process actually works uh, in the background. The first part is really data. We are using the Merge Request API to extract data from there. Uh, so the first phase is the GitLab CI service triggers that process from pre-extracting, setting up right environments, extracting to ingesting, to processing. Then it goes to from that data ops to the ML ops part of it, where we then trigger the training of the data, uh, training of the model, uh, tuning, selecting, uh, serialization of the model, um, and all that is done in uh, cloud, uh, Google Cloud Storage. And that is then connected to our final step uh, where we are serving the model uh, and sending the output to the bot. That's the bot that we see um, for our internal customers, uh, suggesting the reviewer for a certain MR. Um, the front end that can also change with a lot more details later where we would add to the model monitoring and observability part of it and also change uh, the way we uh, serve the um, experience from a bot to actually a front end UI. So now um, I'm going to actually um, let um, Andreas and Alexander go into a lot more details into the pipeline. Sure. Yeah, cool. Let me cool. Just, share, uh, share my screen here. Okay. And so we have this pipeline actually look like. So we start uh, for each project, we create a scheduled pipeline which triggers uh, every three days. And this looks like this. There's uh, quite a few jobs uh, which we combined all into this one YAML. We actually have three big important jobs, the extraction, the transformation, and the training. The reason why we decided to to combine them into this one single YAML? Well, there's two reasons. First, we wanted to keep this uh, sequential flow of uh, making sure the extraction comes before uh, transformation, transformation comes before training. And uh, this seemed like a very convenient way to do this. But also for each of these jobs we have, each one has its own repository, its own uh, pipeline for uh, running unit tests, for doing dependency scanning. And this way we can keep that separate from the actual model training pipeline. Uh, so yeah, these are the, the free project we just uh, remotely include. And uh, once we do that, we just do some housekeeping. We set some global variables. We check if we run any extractions successfully for this project before, because uh, if not, we need to get all the data extracted from all the previous MRs. Otherwise, we just uh, get the data since the last job. Uh, then we run the actual extraction job. 
um, all this stuff gets passed around in artifacts between jobs so we can uh, easily coordinate which data gets where. One downside of this setup is that in some cases we need to actually clone these repositories and get some important files, which again we can uh, pass around with artifacts. Uh, like we do here for the transfer file, we need to get the, the actual main.py uh, that we're running to transform the file. We need to fetch it because then we include a remote YAML. We just uh, include the instructions, not the actual repository. So these, uh, these files we need to, to clone as well. Same we do for the, the training job uh, again we pass this with artifacts and once the the transformation and the training is done we use um, some small bash scripts to to actually persist this into our database and uh, that pretty much it it seems pretty simple, but it actually connects the all these three important jobs and lets us do an end-to-end -end pipeline uh, automatically on preset schedules for all the projects we want. That's um, that's great, actually. Um, going back to uh, the jobs, um, Alexander. Could you help actually even just explain all the different stages from pre-extract to extract to pre-transform all the way till post-pipeline? Uh, that probably will because the stages are quite different to a DevOps pipeline. So that would actually probably help everyone as to how we've set it up, what those uh, specific jobs are even, and, um, and any sort of guidance on uh to reproduce it things people need to consider as well yeah sure but okay let me first share this same uh andres can you stop sharing please okay thanks let me first share the same pipeline so for instance this is the pipe this is the ml ops pipeline for uh for our internal head handbook so just to sum up what Andrew said, it consists of many jobs, most of them just for housekeeping, but mainly there are three main stages to uh, extract data. So this one, right, to transform this data. So we use data flow jobs to transform data and also to move data from, so we, yeah, underneath we also use PubSub between extract stage and transform stage. And we also have some data flow jobs that move data from, uh, from PubSub to, Google Cloud Storage. Then we also have a transform job. Uh, also, this is a data flow job used to transform data and to prepare training and test data sets. And um, so finally, maybe the also very, so this is also a very important stage. Uh, some, this is the training stage. So first we tune hyperparameters. We select the best model for a given project. And then finally, we train the final model that will be published to Google Cloud Storage and will be served later on each uh, request. So right now, so let me focus on each uh, stage, right? On each of these three stages. Okay, so, but we can also check the GitLab CI file that we have right now. Yeah, and as Sandra said, these three stages, they are located in individual projects. So this is the extract stage, right? Uh, here we have the transform stage and here we have all the jobs that relate to the training stage. So let's go, uh, let's check each of these projects right now. And let's start with the extract stage. Okay, I'm trying to find the project. So yeah, if you go to our extractor uh, repo, to the CI folder, you will find the YAML file that is included in each uh, MLOps pipeline. So if we check this YAML file, we'll see that it consists, uh, that it has only one uh, extract merge request CI job. 
that mainly extracts all merge requests from one date to another date. So we took these dates from the Postgres database that we use underneath our MLOps pipeline. So this is just one, um, just one comment to extract, yeah, as I said, merge requests with approvers and also with uh, divs. Because right now uh, the model uh, works based on uh, change files. So that's why for each merge request, we also need to extract change files, changes exactly. So yeah, that's all for the first extract stage. Yeah, for now, we also just one thing, we use a batch of size like 50, 50 merge requests. We extract on each uh, request to the GitLab API. Yeah, and okay, let's check another uh, GitLab CI file of another stage. So, and this is the transform stage. Okay, we have these chops in uh, this repo. Okay, if we go to the CI folder, we will find almost the same file as in the extractor repo. And yeah, so we have only one job here also just to transform our um, extracted merge requests and prepare training and test data sets. So this is the Python project. We use the Python SDK to write the data flow job. And using these comments, we create a data flow job. So this is the runner that indicates that, data flow runner. Uh, our input is our raw data set and our output is uh, training and test uh, data sets. So later we use these uh, data sets to, uh, to feed our model also to tune hyperparameters. So let's check this, uh, this stage, the latest, the last one. Okay, and then we go to the recommendation engine to the heart of this MLOps pipeline. Okay, and maybe this one is the most difficult stage in terms of the number of jobs that we have. So first we have um, the pre-processed data set job. So just to download everything that we have uh, for a given project from the Google Cloud Storage, to zip all these uh, files for the next job. Uh, yeah, this is the goal of this, uh, this step. Now the next job is to tune hyperparameters. So we need to tune in order to select. So we need to find the best uh, parameter, hyperparameters in order to find the best model that can, can, can give us the best uh, results. So uh, yeah, so we, we, we take uh, the zip data set from the previous uh, job and we use this data set uh, here just to transform, uh, sorry, just to tune hyperparameters. And finally, when we find the best model, we, uh, the, sorry, the best hyperparameters, we train the final model. So this one. So this is uh, the job that is related to this step. So here we extract from the file uh, the best uh, hyperparameters. Then we put them to the special YAML file used by the uh, model. And then finally, we train our model. And yes, yeah, uh, the last uh, step, we also need to publish this model. Right now, we push everything to Google Cloud Storage. First, we serialize this model, then we push to the Google Cloud Storage. And later, the, our backend part will take this, uh, these models, uh, deserialize them, and provide recommendations. So I think that's all for all these three stages. So yeah, we can also check templates that we have. So for instance, this is the template to uh, tune hyperparameters. So just some um, variables uh, to control the way how we tune, the method that we use to tune hyperparameters. So this is uh, this is what we are trying to find, the best number of factors, the best regularization, the best number of iterations. So that's just a config file that is used by the model to select hyperparameters in order to select the best model, yeah. 
and the same one with the training. So finally, when we find the best uh, hyperparameters, we put them here uh, to generate the final config. And then we, mm, we feed our model with this config to train the final model. Yeah. Uh, th uh, thanks, Alexander. Um, I'm also, um, uh, I think I would also like to point out in uh, which I, is definitely in our template is how we also include um, security scanning uh, through this process, which um, is something quite uh, rare for machine learning engineers to include um, SAS, DAST, uh, fast testing as part of their CACD template um, into building that. Um, and then I think the last part, I know we talked about pops up uh, data flow. And if anyone's interested, uh, we also have the architecture of it. Uh, and I will just share my screen. And I can go to that. Yeah, so this was just quickly a, the architecture. We have another video that will go a lot more in length in reference to all the different parts and what we use. But if you think about the uh, CI um, file that we've um, built, the full MLOps template that we are calling for, it's actually starting all the way from that extractor uh, connecting to pops up data flow into uh, Google Cloud where the ML model training is done, and then deserializing uh, into backend into the projects. So that's the full sort of workflow of it. Um, and uh, yeah, that is the first MLOps template. I think, Alexander, you want to say something? Yeah, do we need to explain this architecture? Um, I think we have another video for it <laughs> that okay, goes well, a lot I mean, of details into it. <laughs> yeah, just maybe uh, we forget, forget to say, uh, we create the scheduled pipeline on the project registration. So this is done automatically. Once we include the CI templates, this CI template will register and use scheduled pipeline for the given projects. And this, then this, uh, pipe, this MLOps pipeline will be run every three days and uh, automatically update the model data set. So no actions required from the project maintainers only to include the CI templates. Yeah. Um, I think uh, that's a wrap. <laughs> um, well, um, I hope this was very informative. Um, uh, if anyone is keen on understanding how to build the MLOps pipeline using GitLab CI or have any questions on the pipeline for the review recommender, uh, please do um, drop a note for us in our Applied ML Slack channel or reach out to either me, Mon, um, Alexander, and Andreas. We are really happy to help uh, in any part of this uh, journey in building MLOps. Yeah. Okay.